Hi guys. Gee, we have another rainy day here in the end times in the formerly drought plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. Good Lord, it is Friday, May 15th, 2015. I just finished my ecological meltdown roundup rant where I was reading, as I do every week, from my heroes at the Center for Biological Diversity. But I would like to thank my old buddy Pukaloo for sending me this story, which I have to admit I missed. You, you, you can't catch them all right here from the Center for Biological Diversity spelling out for the few people on this planet interested in the single biggest threat to planet Earth. Anybody who wants to hear it is right here. So I'm going to put the link to this story, but uh, I'm just going to sit here and read it to you. If you want some dumb hippie in the rain to read this for you, I'll be happy to. Because it says it all right here. There's nothing I need to add to this story, and I sure as shit don't need to pull out my bullshit button here. Okay, take it away. Center for Biological Diversity and explain to people the single biggest threat to planet Earth, which would be human population growth and extinction. <clears throat> for the five or six people interested in this subject. We are in the midst of the Earth six mass extinction crisis. Harvard biologist E.O. Wilson estimates that 30,000 species per year or three species per hour are being driven to extinction. Compare this to the natural background rate of extinction per million species per year, and you can see why scientists refer to today as a crisis unparalleled in human history. The current mass extinction di differs from all others before it in being driven by one single species rather than a planetary or galactic physical process. When the human race migrated out of Africa to the Middle East 90,000 years ago, to Europe and Australia 40,000 years ago, to North America 12,500 years ago, and to the Caribbean 8,000 years ago, waves of extinction soon followed. The colonization followed by extinction pattern can be seen as recently as 2,000 years ago when humans colonized Madagascar and quickly drove elephant birds hippos and large lemurs extinct, and then I think that New Zealand was even more recent than Madagascar, where humans showed up in New Zealand, and uh, same story. <clears throat> the first wave of extinctions targeted large vertebrates hunted by those noble savages called hunter-gatherers. The second larger wave of extinction began 10,000 years ago as the discovery of agriculture caused a population boom and a need to plow wildlife habitats, divert streams, and maintain large herds of domestic cattle. The third and largest extinction wave began in 1800 with the harnessing of fossil fuels. With enormous cheap energy at its disposal, the human population grew rapidly from 1 billion people in 1800 when fossil fuels kicked in to 2 billion by 1930, 4 billion by 1975, and over 7 billion today. If the current course is not altered, we'll reach 8 billion by 2020 and 9 to 15 billion by 2050. <clears throat> no population of a large vertebrate animal in the history of planet Earth 
has grown that much, that fast, or with such devastating consequences to its fellow Earthlings. Humans' impact on this planet has been so profound that scientists have proposed that the Holocene era, the Calm era, be declared over and the current epoch beginning in about 1900 be called the Anthropocene, the age when, quote, the global environmental effects of increased population and economic development dominate planetary, physical, chemical, and biological conditions. Breaking that down for you, humans annually absorb 42% of this planet's terrestrial net primary productivity, 30% of its marine net primary productivity, and 50% of its fresh water. This is every year. 40% of this planet's land is devoted to human food production up from 7% in 1700. 50% of this planet's land mass has been transformed for human use. I find that number to be way too low. And more atmospheric nitrogen is now fixed by humans than all other natural processes combined. <clears throat> the authors of Human Domination of Earth's Ecosystem concluded, quote, all of these seemingly disparate phenomena trace to one single cause the growing scale of the human enterprise, the rates, scales, kinds, and combination of changes occurring now are fundamentally different from those at any other time in history. We live on a human-dominated planet and the momentum of human population growth together with the imperative for further economic development in most of the world, can you say the global corporatocracy, the new world order, ensures that our dominance will only increase. Predicting local extinction rates is complex due to differences and blah, 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 the, the usual suspects, but one constant, however, is human population pressure. A study of 114 nations found that human population density predicted with 88% accuracy the number of endangered birds and mammals identified by the in International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Current population growth trends indicate that the number of threatened species will increase by 7% over the next 20 years and 14% by 2050 and that is without the addition of global warming impacts. This is Jeffrey McKee, one of the study's authors, quote, the density of people is a key factor in species threats. If other species follow the same pattern as the mammals and birds, we are facing a serious threat to global diversity associated with our growing human population, close quote. So where does wildlife stand in relation to 7 billion people? Worldwide today, 12% of mammals, 12% of birds, 
31% of reptiles, 30% of amphibians, and 37% of fish are threatened with extinction. Not enough plants and invertebrates have been assessed to even determine their global threat level, but it is severe. Extinction is the most serious, utterly irreversible effect of unsustainable human population. But unfortunately, many analyses of what a sustainable human population level would look like presume that the goal, the goal of this entire planet of 99.9% .9 of the clueless morons on this planet, apparently the goal is simply to keep the human race at a level where it has enough food and clean water to survive. Well, I guess we're going to find out where that is. Our notion of sustainability and ecological footprint, indeed our notion of a world worth living in, presumes that humans will allow for and themselves enjoy enough room and resources for all species to live. That, that, that is one hell of a presumption and I just want to show you for anybody who needs to see this graphed out. This is a graph comparing species extinction with human population. Let me get my little camera here. Okay, for, for anybody not understanding what I just read, here's the graph. Okay, this is the human population since 1800. This is the rate of extinction since 1800 and which goes directly in tandem with the rate of fossil fuel development since 1800. If we had a third line, fossil fuel development. But anyway, I have to wrap this up because I got to get my wedding cake from the end times ready to go to a wedding and celebrate the happy couple for this rant. Bye, guys.